Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Now, welcome to the first and the uh, and the largest, actually, online career expo that's ever staged in the city's innovation and technology sector. Now, for those of you who weren't with us earlier, uh, just this afternoon, I'll introduce myself once again. My name is MC Melody Kwan, and I will be with you all week long. Now, I know we have some newcomers that actually just came in, so I'll probably just do a brief little introduction as well. And for those of you who heard it earlier, this uh, will actually get you even more more familiar with us. Now on this uh, virtual platform, besides uh, the over 1,000 career opportunities that are provided for more than 150 science park technology companies, that's across many fields. For example, uh, we have AI and robotics, we have fintech, we have health tech, and we also have smart city, uh, which you could just apply for in one click, which is very important. We try to make it as easy for everybody as possible. And no, you can actually do this anytime and anywhere because I'm sure a lot of you are at home right now. Hopefully you guys are staying in and we're presenting you close to 20 webinars uh, that are featuring some very experienced recruiters. Now we have INT heavyweights and we also have some trailblazing startups and industry experts over this entire week. We're actually having stuff that's going on all the way until March the 31st. So let's get ready. So go in, say hello to your future and take your career to a whole new level and also definitely get ahead of the game. Now, with this session, we actually uh, have some very exciting stuff going on. We have Mr. Jeff Wong. He's the uh, head of sales in North Asia LinkedIn, and he will share with us on how to optimize your LinkedIn profile. This is very important. Everyone, keep your ears peeled, keep your eyes open. Let's give a big round of applause to Jeff. Thank you so much. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, Melody, for the introduction. Absolute pleasure to be, to be here with you, you know, um, talking about how do we leverage LinkedIn to optimize um, our LinkedIn profile and potentially, you know, make that meaningful con connection with, uh, with, with our LinkedIn members. Thank you. So go right in. Um, I will probably like bombard you with questions after, but yes, please share. All right. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, optimizing LinkedIn profile, it's actually no different to how you do your networking from a day to day basis. So really, you know, your profile is your story. And first and foremost, the most important thing in terms of building a LinkedIn profile is it's a photo, actually. You know, having a really professionally done photo on your LinkedIn profile actually will help, um, help you know, enhance your, 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 your search results by actually nine times. Um, your, your profile will actually come up 21 times more um, than not having a photo. Um, and even talking about messages, you probably receive 36 times more messages by having a photo. So um, if you don't take anything away, um, the one thing to take away from this session is, you know, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile picture, um, get, get, get a professional photo done and, and, and put it on your LinkedIn profile. Um, it will really help in terms of uh, uh, connecting with your fellow members and, and eventually, you know, landing a dream job. Right, because I know that's something, it sounds as simple as it is, but a lot of people kind of overlook that because we like to talk to people, right? Just like how I prefer to be talking to you as opposed to just the name, Jeff. So yes, thank you so much for that pointer. Uh, go on, I'm, I'm totally listening. Yeah, and then, you know, to be honest, you know, um, once you're on LinkedIn, um, one of the things that you, know, you should definitely do is start following some of those companies that you're passionate about, um, be it technology, be it... Um, be it finance, be it, you know, retail, whatever companies that you're passionate about, um, the chances are they're going to have a presence on LinkedIn and follow those companies because the companies will update their LinkedIn profile on a regular basis. So you can really keep a close, a, a close pulse in terms of what's happening uh, with that company or even within that industry. Um, apart from following companies, uh, we have a lot of influencers um, on, on LinkedIn, um, you know, you're talking about, you know, thought leaders that who've, who've been very successful within their industries. Um, and those influencers have been selected very carefully by our editorial team um, based out of the U.S. So follow the influencers because they will also be, you know, sharing frequent information about the industry, their thoughts, um, future technology, so on and so forth. So absolutely do um, be, be active on, on LinkedIn. Wow, that's actually very interesting. As you were talking, I was personally, I was taking notes already because I'm, I'm quite active on LinkedIn. But then actually, if you ask me, do I follow enough influencers? 
I don't. And um, for those of you who's at home, that's definitely something to work taking a mental note on because just like with uh, fashion trends and everything, we follow influencers to know the trends. So the same thing actually applies when you're in the professional field. Thank you so much. Wow, this is great. Absolutely. And, and a couple of things I wanted to add is, you know, when you're building out your LinkedIn profile, uh, apart from, a, you know, a stunning photo, um, the other things that are really important is, you know, make sure you, you treat it like your digital resume um, in terms of you've got to add your industry that you're currently working in or you are uh, uh, passionate about you know, joining a specific industry. Um, and especially when it comes to crafting a, a compelling summary, you know, treat it as um, your elevator pitch or even treat it as, you know, when the first time you meet someone, you know, how would you introduce yourself? You know, um, apart from professionally, you know, feel free to actually add in topics that you're passionate about. You know, if you're passionate about, you know, um, the environment, if you're passionate about charity, if you're passionate about coaching, um, add that in um, because that just gives you a bit of flavor in terms of, of, of your profile. And hopefully that will stand out um, when, when comparing to other professionals on, on the platform. Huh, that's actually very interesting. I guess in a way uh, that makes you more, not just more well-rounded, but also it makes you more human too, because there's the, you know, there's the stuff that's all camera ready and all professional. And of course, it's something that makes you, you, right? That's what you're trying to say? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, when you're writing the summary about yourself, when you're writing this job description, that the job that you're currently in, you know, be authentic, um, mm. you know, use languages that people would, you know, easily understand. Um, right. the, the key is you want people to have a look at your profile and get a real good feel of who you are as a person. So hopefully by being authentic, um, your personality will shine through in the, in the, in the social media. Well, that's true. Now, just because a lot of things are on the digital space, it doesn't mean you can't actually put like your own signature on it. Now, that actually leads to one of my first questions. Now, what are your top tips when it comes to like writing about like when it comes to the person writing about their work experience? Because it's not easy. Writing is about someone else is easy, but writing about, well, even I'm saying for myself is not the easiest. Do you have any pro tips on that? I do actually, you know, before I built up my own LinkedIn profile, what I actually did is I, I looked around on the platform to, you know, to, to do a bit of research, you know, to kind of have a look at, you know, which profile stood out to me, what do I like about it? Um, and then over time, you, you're able to identify, you know, what a good profile looks like and you, you get an understanding of, you know, what a good, you know, job description experience looks like and how do you should put it on, onto your LinkedIn profile. So definitely spend a bit of time you know, browse through some of your connections. Um, you're able to find a couple of profiles that, that stands out to you. Um, and then you can, I'm not saying you copy, but you know, you, you, take, you take a look at it and see, you know, why does this that stood out to you? And you can put it in your own words when you're building out your own LinkedIn profile. Wow, this is good stuff. And I definitely see how that actually can save a lot of work too, because as you said, it's not about copying from somebody else because you don't want to be them and you're not them, but it's getting inspired from that style that probably matches what makes you you. Now, actually, um, that kind of is related to this question. Now, uh, what sections on the LinkedIn profiles to do employers actually uh, pay or recruiters pay the most attention to and, and why? I great guess that's question. a million dollar question. Yeah, yeah great question. It's, um, simply put, is the more information on your LinkedIn profile, um, the easier um, recruiters or HR professional were able to find you. Um, the reason being is because usually when HR or recruiter are searching for the ideal candidates, they'll use keywords. Uh, oh. it, will, it will be by industry, it will be by the job title, it will be by their years of experience, um, even uh, location. And, and education. Um, so if you, so, so if you're filling out your profile, ensure that your location's updated, um, your education's updated, your industry's updated, um, as well as your job titles are updated. Um, so the more information that you have on the LinkedIn profile, it will really help um, the relevant recruiters or the relevant HR professional or the relevant companies to reach out to you. Um, uh, yeah, so that's, that's kind of a kind of bit, bit of a tips in terms of um, getting getting yourself out there in front of the right um, in the right recruiters and the right HR professional. 
Wow. So now let me get that straight because I, I'm, uh, I, I, should, I have a blog on my own and I have a YouTube channel. So it's kind of the same logic. Uh, keywords, hashtags, it's the words that we talk about on that blog post. It's the, the bio that we have. It's the uh, description that we have. It's, that, it's the same logic, right? It's almost like SEO in a way. Absolutely. It's all about relevancy. We, mm. want, we want to basically, you know, um, you know, advertise the right jobs to our members and we want to match yourself, professionals, to the right companies and to the right recruiters. So absolutely relevancy. Um, it's very, very similar to any other social media um, and how it works, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Instagram. It's all about relevancy. Mm, got it. Now, another thing is, um, actually, this is kind of like a general question, but also one of those million dollar questions. Um, how, how do, what is the best way to, for somebody to grow their network on LinkedIn? And also, how can you leverage that to find more opportunities? Absolutely. There's a few things that you can do on LinkedIn. Um, for, for more of an in, intermediate user of LinkedIn or advanced user, um, they would actually, um, quite often, they'll share a lot of updates. They will share a lot of their updates, um, you know, in their own voice. Again, they will post frequently, and they will, they will, if they read anything, they will come across any articles that are interesting. You know, they will, they will, they will post it and they will share it, um, share, share their point of view. Um, and some, some of them even include their rich media. They will so sometimes even do videos, videos content. So something like that, you know. And, and once you share it with your network, then you start getting that interaction, and slowly people will want to connect with you. So that's one way of doing it: um, sharing updates. The other way of doing it, um, and these are for more advanced user, um, is publishing content, long form posts. So if you if you're extremely passionate about a certain topic, um, you can write about it in your in your own view, um, and it will come um, come in a form of a long form post um, instead of a, a short sort of a newsfeed update. So it's, it's much more comprehensive. It's much longer, um, but that would, that that sort of long form post would attach to your LinkedIn profile. And over time, you also um, get followers, you get audience that, you know, are interested in what you want to share. And with that, that will also help you grow your connection. Wow. I, I love this. I'm completely absorbing this. I hope everyone at home, you're doing the same because this is very valuable information that not everyone will bother to tell you sometimes because it, there's no value for them. And so thank you so much. Yeah, Jeff, this is really yeah. great. And now I, I really, I really want to know, um, like, actually, this is a question that I think me and the audience probably both uh, want to know too. It's what usually catch the eye on the, uh, on the LinkedIn page, other than the photo that you mentioned, do you think it's objectives or is it the qualification? or is it the number of connections? Because from an influencer perspective, we're looking at their views and you know how many followers. It's kind of like the same here, right? Or is it not? Yeah, I think you can use the same logic, you know. Um, but in terms of um, when it comes to LinkedIn, it is very much about um, the specific industry that you're passionate in. You know, if you're in, you know, the startup industry, naturally you would have more of a startup network. Um, it's not so much um, like the other social media. You you follow people. You follow people that are that are based off interests. Um, LinkedIn is really much about professional. You know, furthering your career uh, within your industry. So usually, um, each person's network is very unique. Um, it's based on their industry, based on their passion. Um, so that yeah, so that's hopefully answer your question. Hmm. So, uh, so actually further to that, just kind of to fine tune it a little bit, do you think the quality of their connection there's, so there's a so-called quality of connections or relevancy of connections in that case then, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, everybody treat their LinkedIn connections differently. Um, for me personally, um, at the beginning, you know, when I started out my career, you know, I wanted to grow my network. Basically I was just adding and connecting with anybody that's, you know, um, invite me. But in the past three to five years, I've really put, to get, put together a framework in terms of how I connect with people. Um, it, it has to be the person that I've met or had a brief conversation with. Um, mm. The second criteria is, you know, we're in the same industry. Um, potentially, you know, I can offer some sort of help or that, that individual can actually help me with something. Um, and thirdly, you know, um, it has to be, it has to be um, if that person's reaching out and with a legitimate reason, um, that I think is, 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 um, is of quali quality, then I'm, I'm open to connect. But if someone just shoot me a random, random connections without any sort of context, um, then I prefer not to. I think quality is key. 
Okay. Well, yes, there's one thing that I did right. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So now, um, now someone actually asked, um, should I attach my CV and cover letter if I'm applying for a job on LinkedIn? My guess is yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's actually a lot of ways that you can, you can actually attach a resume onto your LinkedIn profile. Um, you know, actually, if you are in more of a technical role um, in, in technology, what LinkedIn has recently rolled out is you can start taking these um, quizzes, um, skill quizzes. Basically, once you pass the specific quiz, it will, it will then give you a badge or, or you will have that specific skills. So, it's, but then it's very much towards technical skills. Um, soft skills, we're talking about at LinkedIn, but it's kind of hard to quantify it and how to test soft skills over, or, you know, on, on a computer. But that's something that we are, we're, we're trying to develop. <clears throat> Thank you. Wow. Actually, I, I don't think, I, I don't think a lot of us will actually pay attention to that function, not knowing that it's that valuable. Whew. Wow, this is great. Now, another thing is, um, this is a little bit more technical, I guess. Now, what's the function of the credential ID? Uh, that's on the LinkedIn. I, I think I've seen that before, but what is what is that exactly? Credential ID. You might. Have, I mean, I I don't actually know what that is right now on top of my head. Um, mm. But you know, if if I can probably go back and have a look. But right now, it's it's you know, I can't think of anything that's relating the credential ID. But um, mm. you know, we can probably get back to the to one of the audience if if that's something right. that you know, that person's passionate about. Right. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. Sometimes I'm sure there's like new functions or functions that are just. Oh, kind yeah. Of yeah it's, so, yeah, it's that. Well, that's good. Now, another thing is uh, what kind of profile pic best are, are best fit to be pro, uh, posted on LinkedIn? The reason why I, I'm guessing the reason why this audience asks this question is because it's still kind of all over the place at the same time. Like when you look at a LinkedIn, it's you see all sorts. It's an arrangement. Sometimes you see the really cool ones when people are like at a 45 degree angle and they're kind of yeah. hugging their elbows. Uh, yeah. What is the, the best ones? I don't get it. I can, I can probably share with you what not to do, you know, okay. um, what not to do is definitely, you know, any sort of going out pictures, you know, with, with a glass of wine in the hand, it's probably trying to avoid, um, avoid pictures like that. Anything mm. that's too casual at the end of the day is a professional network. Um, um, quite often people wanted to, you know, if, if someone is into passionate about, you know, rock climbing or running or, or something like that, you know, quite often they would, they would post pictures of themselves who are, when they're participating other, uh, other sports outside of their professional um, um, career. So, I mean, that's also, I've seen that. And I think that, that that's quite cool as well, but definitely try and stay away from um, party photos, um, stay away from, you know, wearing sunglasses in that specific pictures um, trying to keep it pretty clean and, you know, pretty realistic. So if and when you connect with someone on LinkedIn, if so happen that you can meet in person, you know, that person be like, ah, you look exactly like, you know, what I imagine, you know, by, by looking at your LinkedIn profile. Wow. This is, wow. This is really good stuff. Thank you. It's, I, I'm not sure if you guys feel that when you're at home right now, but after this few minutes with Jeff, I feel that I actually know nothing about how to work my LinkedIn, but this is really good. It's a good start. And it looks like, wow, you know, Jeff, time just flew. Our time's up. Can you believe that? Oh, this wow. Is, oh, this wow. Is great. And this is only like the beginning. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff. Now, everyone at home, please put your hands together with me. Big round of applause to Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. And it has been a pleasure uh, to have you with us. This wraps up our webinar session in terms of uh, how to optimize your LinkedIn profile. And of course, for those of you who's at home, if you want to recap any of the key takeaways, uh, the recorded version will be available online throughout the Virtual Career Expo. And also, we, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we do have some more informative webinars that will be on every day until the 31st of this month. And just a little bit of a sneak preview for tomorrow, we have a FinTech the springboard to business opportunities. That's uh, by uh, Casey Choi. He's a chief operating officer of uh, Crypto BLK. And then we have uh, Acer CV ooh, by Sebastian Jun. He's an associate manager, digital and e-commerce, uh, and also with Michael Page International Hong Kong Limited. And that, so I guess that's a co-hosted kind of session right there. And then last for tomorrow, we have the top in-demand jobs in INT by uh, Charles Mack. He's a team leader, head of technology uh, of Spencer Ogden. So uh, be sure to stay around. Uh, don't miss any of these sessions. And you can actually check online for the uh, schedule if you forgot or if not, uh, not aware of what time they're going to happen. And also, 
I'll say this repeatedly. If you have any inquiries or if you need any technical support, if you need any facilitation, please do contact us at HKSP at vfairs.com, V-F-A-I-R-S.com. And I hope to see you in the other webinars. Uh, good luck in your job search, everyone, at the Hong Kong Science Park at the Virtual Career Expo. And we will see you again tomorrow. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye.